Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech, here looking at the top 10 white EDH cards. Once again, I've had significant help on this video from the Magic the Seattleing community. I definitely would like to thank them for all of their suggestions towards this video. Quickly, let's go over the criteria. Number one, each of the cards here are under $20. The focus is on finding inexpensive, easy to add cards. The idea here is to get cards that can easily be added to a deck. Second thing, the second piece of criteria here is that the cards have the feel of the particular color. So they have some aspect that makes them feel white. Uh, the last piece of criteria is no blatant combos. I, EDH is a a political game about interacting and playing with other people. If you would just like to combo out by reoccurring some angels on turn four, I'm really not interested in playing with you. We can play Legacy, where I've happily got four Force of Wills, and we'll play a fair game. But let's move on to the honorable mentions. The two honorable mentions that I've got here today are amazing cards that could easily each have made the top ten. Armageddon has almost dropped out of use entirely in the particular play group that I'm in. The Destroy All all lands effect for four mana tends to run counter to a, what a lot of people like to do, which is cast some of the cooler overpriced large cards. Now, I do think there is some strategic advantage, clearly, to playing Armageddon, but Armageddon often doesn't end the game right away. The game will linger on for many, many more turns, and if you're going to play a Kill Condition card, I would strongly prefer that it ends the game. Humility is a wonderful card, turning each creature into a 1-1 one -one with no abilities, but what it does is it really creates this mini sub-game of kill the player who played Humility. It's used in a, in a lot of combos, it shuts down a lot of the creature answers that are out there, it also blatantly spites all of the generals that are out there. The bonus tech this time is two white flash creatures. These are amazing white creatures. I recommend them in every EDH deck that has white or that splashes white. Aven Mind Sensor Flash. If an opponent would search the library, that opponent searches the top four cards of his library instead. I've seen this used extremely effectively to shut down cards such as Survival of the Fittest or Birthing Pod, which were my top picks over in the EDH green side. It's also just great against a, a fetch land or a demonic tutor. It really forces people to play a balanced game. Stone Cloaker is another great card. It has a wonderful comes into play effect. The effect is that you remove a card from somebody's graveyard. This is a great way for white to deal with recursion. It also, when he comes into play, allows you to return another creature from your play to your hand. So you can just bounce Stone Cloaker back and use him again and again. But I think he's a lot more fun when you have other comes into play effects such as Solemn Simulacrum to go get a basic hand or an acidic slime to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. The, the card is wonderful overall, definitely recommend checking him out. I'm doing something a little bit odd here. This is my first kind of real negative rant around a card. I would love to see this card banned from EDH. Iona, Shield of Emera, is an incredibly powerful card, very high casting cost, but there's lots of ways in EDH to sneak it out. And when she is in play, you choose a color and your opponents cannot cast spells of the chosen color. This card shuts down mono color decks 100%. There's just nothing that they can do. There is no way that you can respond to Iona on the stack in a way that will kill her outside of a counter spell. So blue has a little bit of a chance here, but green, black, red, and even white, although you'd be spiting yourself, uh, decks are just shut down entirely by this card. I, what I don't like about this card is that it destroys the interaction in the game, and, a, and from a interactive political perspective, I really wish this card would be tossed. Now let's move on to the more fun stuff, the top 10, starting with number 10. Number 10 here, I've got a Soul Warden. Soul Warden has had an incredible impact on the board in large multiplayer games that I've played. Every time a creature comes into the battlefield, you gain a life. Now, this is better than Essence Warden, which makes it optional. I love that it's mandatory. Gaining life is one of the things White has always tried to do, and Soul Warden does it extremely well in large multiplayer games. Beacon of Immortality is also pretty entertaining in that it doubles your life total, which isn't bad when you start out at 40. 
Uh, Windbrisk Raptor for 7 is a little bit expensive, but giving all your attacking creatures lifelink is a nice bonus also. Number 9 here, we've got a little bit of a control card, defensive card, Core Haven. This is really a $5 equivalent of Maze of Ith. It has slightly less utility, but for $5 instead of $50, this is an incredibly good card. It has the defensive aspects to it of things like Ghostly Prison, and really discourages people from attacking you and encourages them to attack other players. This creates that situation in the game where it encourages people to go after your opponents and not you, and that's one of the aspects I really like about EDH is that political encouragement to attack others. Number eight here, I've got a Planeswalker, and this is one of the first Planeswalkers I've put into the top 10 EDH videos. This is Gideon Jura here. Or his plus two here basically makes all of the creatures an opponent has attack him, which is great. You can get your opponents to impale their creatures on your creatures. The minus two here is pretty good in that it's removal, destroy target tapped creatures. It's a great follow-up to getting your opponent to impale most of their creatures on your creatures. The zero is also really nice in conjunction with board wipes because for zero you get a 6-6 six, six creature that prevents all damage done to it to go out and attack somebody. Um, this is one of the few planeswalkers that I think holds up really well in EDH. Elspeth is definitely an honorable mention here. The ability to jump creatures and get through some extra damage is really nice. The emblem there making all of your items indestructible also is just incredible. Johnny Goldman, I think, is the most flavorful of the EDH that really feels like a white Planeswalker, as he's got plus two life and the ability to give your creatures a plus one, plus one counters and vigilance. Vigilance is extremely useful in EDH, as you back and then defend from multiple people. So his ultimate is pretty good in giving you a creature with power and toughness equal to your life. And... EDH starting out at 40, that ends up being extremely good. Number 7 spot, I've got Avison Angel of Hope. She's one of the newer cards that I have on this list. The first time that I did this list up, I actually had about 12 angels on my possible for this list, and I've decided instead to do a top 10 angels list another time. Avison currently has one of the biggest impacts on the board state, especially in a player that has a significant number of board wipes, making your permanence indestructible is just incredible. I'm going to honorable mention a few other angels or angel-like effects here and leave the rest of my commentary on angels for another video. Relic Arbiter really does slow down the game significantly in having your opponents either attack or cast spells. This um, Sarah Ascendant is one of the most broken cards in EDH overall. A one casting cost 6-6 six, six flying lifelinker with no real drawback unless your life drops below 30. Monarch's Ascension is also another card that because of the way the mechanics are put together, you can easily have 4-4 four, four angels coming out for 2 mana each on turn 2 after the end of everybody's second turn or third turn. Incredibly overpowered card given the mechanics of EDH. Number 6 spot here is something that was mostly pointed out to me by other people is that white has really become the color of equipment. So that I mentioned in the red video, Godo was an incredible equipment a creature as the bonus tech, but really here it has so many options for going and finding equipment, and equipment is incredibly valuable in the EDH. Being able to get protection from one or two different colors is extremely useful. Stoneforge Mystic does that job best at two casting cost with a body and the ability to sneak out the equipment by one is just amazing, but there's several good honorable mentions here, including for the Holy Relic, which will bring out a piece of equipment on a and equip it to an attacking creature and Stoneweller Giant that allows you to search your library for a piece of equipment and put it into play every single turn may actually be better in many situations than Stoneforge Mystic. Bill Shaper's Gift is a nice tutor type effect specifically for equipment and Naja Swordsmith is also that same type of a tutor equip or equipment effect. In the number five spot, this is one of the cards that I struggled over the most actually promoting. Cataclysm does feel a bit like the overpower overpowered balance and probably is a bit overpowered. What it does is it has each player choose from the permanence he or she controls an artifact, a creature, 
enchantment and a land and sacrifice the rest. This does seem fair in that each person ends up with only one. So it does lend itself to building a deck where you have one of each of those types of permanence that is extremely powerful and the rest are disposable. So when you know this is coming, you can often tap out most of your mana, back down to one of each, and then play some extras from your hand. This is also an effect that has been around all the way since Alpha and Beta. Balance was in the original set, and although extremely overpowered, and I understand why it's banned in EDH, it's nice to see a newer card with a little more balance to it. Number four here is really a focus on removing individual creatures. This is something that has been around since Alpha Beta with Swords to Plowshares. Wing Shards is my choice, though, for the absolute best of the targeted removal because it punishes someone for attacking you and for casting a bunch of spells in the same turn. It also hits a lot of the untargetable creatures out there as your opponent actually has to sacrifice the creatures. Uh, many of my friends have made a strong argument though that Path to Exile would be the top one in this spot because it has removal, doesn't give life, and can often be used even to ramp yourself. Something that white is really missing. There's very few ways to go ramp in white. Oblivion Ring though is also another really strong option in this spot. I understand why it's been moved up to an uncommon instead of a common as it was when it originally came out. Oblivion Ring allows you to remove any permanent. It's a little bit less powerful in EDH as people do have permanent re removal and enchantment removal, but it's a nice answer to almost any permanent out there. The number three spot uh, putting land tax here. I almost didn't include land tax from this list because it had jumped up to about $45 or so a few weeks ago, but it's back down around the $10 to $15 range now that people realize that it's not really amazing and legacy anymore because the legacy environment is fast. But what I love about this card is how well it helps you fix your mana in EDH, being able to go get a basic land or up to three basic lands every turn and put them into hand does a great job of thinning your deck, but also lets you go get whatever color of lands you want. A strong honorable mention here to Weathered Wayfarer, who lets you get any type of land and put it in hand. And Tithe is actually one of my favorites in letting you go get two planes, so it doesn't, once again, it doesn't have to be basic lands there, so you can color fix with it. Eternal Dragon is also another really nice addition to decks where he kind of fits the theme, because he can be used again and again for five mana to return him, and he cycles for a planes. Doesn't have to be a basic planes. In the number two spot here, I have Eight and a Half Tails, which is one of the best color protection cards out there, if not the best. It gives any permanent that you control protection from white until end of turn, which doesn't seem like a big deal until you read the second ability he has, which is target spell or permanent becomes white until end of turn. So short of a board wipe, there is no way to remove your permanents once eight and a half tails is out given that you have enough mana. This is really like a mother of runes except usable several times. The number one spot here, I have board wipes generally. Wrath of God was in the earliest sets, alpha, beta, and this one here that we're looking at is actually from Portal, which is my favorite artwork for Wrath of God. The ability to destroy creatures and not allow them to regenerate is incredible. A martial coup is a favorite in my playgroup, destroying creatures and giving you a positive board state. If you cast it for seven or more, you get a bunch of little 1-1 one, one soldiers after the board is destroyed. Terminus has to be one of the best new cards that has come out, allowing you to tuck individuals' generals into the bottom of their deck and all other creatures. It also stops the reanimator cards out there. But the one that I chose here to really focus on is the Steward Command because it has the options of pretty much any type of board wipe that you want, and the board wipe is often one-sided. The modal ability and the choice to turn what should appear to be a, a equal balanced card into a one-sided route is incredible. I love a story command for that reason. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with the EDH Top 10 White Cards. If you have any suggestions on blue or black, please let me know. I'm working on those two videos currently. I also strongly recommend checking out the Magic the Seattling community over on Facebook.